Hello YouTube! Welcome to the Wolf Den on a Sunday morning in Jacksonville, Florida. I decided, since you know I do a lot of videos about the Daiwa Ryoga, the older models, not the new brand new black ones by any means, because who the hell can afford those? But I don't know if we ever took these down to like the cleaning stage. All right, so you could see them. So let's start out with the side plate. As you can see, I have the spool out. And this one actually is an older model. This is a 2020 H. You can see it right there. It says 2020H right there. I've got so many of these reels that I really can't remember what all the gear ratios are for every one. And of course, I did a video about how to purchase Daiwa Ryogas on eBay. And I kind of gave all my tips and tricks, I guess you could say, on how to purchase these from Japan. And that's where I got every single one of mine from. I think I've got 8, 9, 10, 11, about 11 or 12 of them at this point. And that is a good point. Let me make a point here before I move on that if you have a reel that you absolutely love I and you are a serious, dedicated angler, I'm just not talking about once a month kind of guys. You're a dedicated angler. And you know, you're not a bass pro, Billy Bass dude with, so, you know, you're, they're not throwing reels at you. You have to go get them. Or if you're like me, you're a tackle junkie and you find something you like and you just always want to use and you want to continue to own. And my thing is, I love spares. Spare everything. Spare anchors. Spare engines, spare knives, spare reels, spare ugly sticks. Now that's another, that brings me to another point. I don't know if I'm ever going to get to what I actually decided this video was going to be about at this point. It's really funny how people want to judge you on YouTube. And it's kind of like the days when, you know, I used to be on forums. You know, you'd You'd do you'd put a post up on a on a fishing forum or something like that, and then all the bashers come along. Well, one of the more common things that you may not even see in my comments is some of the you know almighty fishermen out there who say, "How the heck can you put a three hundred dollar or they call them five hundred dollar?" $500 reels on a $30, $40 ugly stick. I had one guy that made me really laugh. He says, isn't that like putting hubcaps on a Ferrari? Well, guess what? For me, in my style of fishing, the reel is more important than the rod. I'll just say that. I'm not casting lures constantly. I'm a bait fisherman. I do throw some lures sometimes. I float rig fish. All we do is drift the float, set it at a prescribed depth, out behind the boat in massive current. The reels are way more important to me all the time than the rod. The rod needs to be ultimate in durability and have the type of flex that I'm looking for. Because I don't like and I don't want anybody pulling the hooks on a trophy fish. So I use very supple rods and those rods are ugly sticks. So 
Okay, to get back to what I was talking about. If you find a reel that you really like and it works for you, do you know going all out because they're not, you're not getting a, a, you don't have a real sponsorship and they're, you know, throwing stuff at you or you're getting a massive discount. I found through my own just doings is get a lot of them. So you have them all the time. And while you're fishing some, you can be cleaning up other ones. And that's exactly what I'm doing right now. I'm cleaning up some Ryogas that have seen some good saltwater duty. And I'm just getting the grime off of them. I'm putting a little Corrosion X. Uh, that's what I use. I got a little bottle of it right here. I use this stuff all over my you know, aluminum charter boat. And I'll, I'll put a picture right here, right now. All right, so I use a lot of Corrosion X. I buy it from Zorro Tools. About a hundred bucks about. I mean, a little, little cheaper if you can get it that way for a gallon of it. And I go through about a gallon a year. Right in here, on this, I was brought to my attention by a all-knowing viewer one time, I guess, that this right here, it's very hard to tell. It, it kind of sounds like metal. That's what I always thought, that this is metal. And he said that, the, that this is nothing but chrome-plated plastic. Well, either way, you know, chrome-plated plastic is the new deal today, you know what I mean? Because it's all over your vehicle. If you've got, you know, well, they don't even like to put chrome on vehicles anymore. Vehicles are so boring. So boring. You give me a chrome-plated damn old Ford pickup truck or something, man. I'm telling you, I'm all over it like stink on a manure pile. That's what I'm talking about. Chrome down the side. Chrome rims. Chrome around the headlights. Real chrome on steel. American steel. So here's this is what I do. I got all these. I buy just boxes and boxes of these things. If you're cleaning a Daiwa, you can call this a cleaning chopstick. Me 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 cleaning chopsticks. All right, well, all seriousness here. That is sort of what a Daiwa Ryoga looks like inside. I don't think I've ever had them literally apart on any one of my videos. This is the Z-Mag system, if you're not familiar. The side plate. The mags are right in here. This is the mags. And then on the Daiwa Ryoga, you got this where it turns and the mags get closer to, here's the spool. And it sits like this. The spool sits in there. So the mags create the magnetic field around this piece of aluminum on the spool here. So that's how the Z-Mag, I guess, or whatever he, the Daiwa calls it, system works. I've actually had charter customers ask, ask me, well, you know, the reels are aluminum, so why do they use magnets? Mag uh, a, um, aluminum is not magnetic. And I have to remind them that all we're doing here, 
by moving the mags in and out to adjust for backlash and everything is the magnetic field. All right, the magnetic field is getting closer or further away from this right here. So when the magnetic field is closer, it'll slow the spool down. When it's further away, the spool can go faster. That's how it works. A lot of folks really just don't know that. So I explain it to them. It's about magnetic field, not magnetism. All right, so what I'm doing here is I'm cleaning them up. I guess you could say the other thing about the Daiwa Ryogas is many reels right here will have like a paw cap, right? And as you can see right there, this Daiwa Ryoga, right, right there, there is no paw cap with a paw in it with a cap on it. So that's a bit different. I've never had an issue with any of my any of my level wines on any of my Ryogas. Alright. This one isn't as all smooth as it used to be though. I mean these are getting a little long in the tooth. These, this model of Daiwa Ryoga. So, um, and I've been using them. I mean, I use the hell out of these things, man. I, I, don't, I don't give them no slack. But this is how I clean them up. I just go in here like this and look at all that grime. There's a brand new one. That's the grime right there, folks, that comes out of my reels fishing these in salt water. So, having a bunch of these, maybe a little, I don't know, whatever. I got a gallon of Corrosion X, and I kind of dab it around a little bit. Probably goes against everything that, you know, the, the real gurus would say. But, I put some all in here. Because you got to remember, I got salt water a splashing. Right? So I put in all the places that I kind of can't reach, I put Corrosion X. Put it under here, and I let it just kind of sit on there. Right? So nothing special, but I figured I would show you a little bit about the inner workings of them. Then I might take some really, really, really light oil, and I dab it on the bearing right there, just a drop or two. I don't really take the side plates off over here, the gear, the gear side, handle side, unless I'm having some kind of serious issue. When I'm just doing this, I call this just dusting and cleaning. I just want to get them cleaned up, get some of the grime off. Oh, sorry. And I go in here like this, and that's pretty much it. And back here, the salt might build up a little bit, dab a little doo on there dab a little do you on there so um, that's pretty much it I break them down and I put a little dabs here and there it's all gonna wash off in the in the mix here when I'm doing a lot of fishing with these these are very jewel like these are very Rolex very tight tolerance reels so I don't really get a lot of salt water or salt intrusion over on this side or this side, right? But there's the threads that this goes on. I'm gonna clean up these threads. I just wanna get any grime, any particulates that may be on here. There's a spool bearing there and I would check my check around here make sure there's no grime alright so that's pretty much it just giving you a little view of the Daiwa Ryoga on the internals here a little bit not true internals 
because I reiterate a lot of information on my YouTube channel because, of course, not everybody is going to actually look at your channel, investigate all the things that you talk about, investigate other videos. So I have to reiterate a lot of information all the time. So what I'll do is I'll put a link either in the card or the end cards of this video or in the video description of how to purchase Daiwa Ryogas on eBay and do it smartly and get a good deal. Don't pay no four and five hundred dollars. There is no reason to. There's just a little inner workings video and uh, don't forget to subscribe, push that notification bell. That really, you know, if I had everybody with about almost 8,000 subscribers, if everybody pushed that notification bell and got and at least viewed the video for two minutes out of 10, boy, I'll tell you, I'd be really, I'd be really doing something. Thanks for watching. And uh, don't forget, check that other video out if you're interested in the ins and outs of how to purchase one of these older model Daiwa Ryogas and get a good deal. See you on the next video. I want to go fishing Cause it takes my stress away I want to go fishing Cast my blues away. I wanna go fishing. I don't want to watch the clock. I wanna go fishing.